The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. We are back. New York Yankee baseball, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. The hosts are Robert Denninger, Jack DeGraw, both present and accounted for. How are you guys? Doing good yourself, I'm great. Jack. I'm great. How, how are you, Robert? Ralph? I'm doing good. I'm doing just peachy. The weather in Northern California, um, I hate to say it so early, we may have what I call a relapse, but spring has sprung. It's the low 60s. or It's gone from the low 60s up to low 70s, and we'll dry weather for the next week and a half. Um, I got to love it after a Long winter, long winter for everyone, not as much for Californians. How's the weather by you guys? You're in New Jersey, Robert. Yeah, it's not bad. It uh, it feels like it's uh, 21 degrees here, a little little chilly. Okay, a little chilly. (laughs) But but, but it's going to be in the (laughs) – it it should be a, a comfortable week. You're hanging around 40. Okay. Now, I mean, Jack, given that, you're in Florida. Uh, yes. And they've, it's been like, hit, they've been hit with a, uh, a cold spell, let's face it. What city are you yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been down here for like 13 years, and we've had like, you know, some nights it was like 28, 30 degrees, which down here is like, you know, 10 below up north. So, right. <laughs> right. You, No question your blood thins. I can remember yeah, after all these years. Visit. I remember going back to visit one frigid November, and I, I'm i just not a sock wearer unless I'm playing tennis or whatever. And I went to New York in November with no socks and um, had a, a horrible situation where an in, my brother's in-law passed away, and I had to go to an unveiling. And I had no socks. I had to go <laughs> to an unveiling and sit there in front of a bunch of mourners who were mourning a stranger to me, and perhaps a, a stranger that didn't particularly like me when they were alive. And I'm sitting <laughs> in the back of the room with no socks. It was, I don't know. It was just like I'm here on a uh, – I have boat shoes, you know, that that kind of thing. Um I don't know how I flashed on that, but uh, winters <laughs> in November can g- get very, very cold. And yeah. um, so <laughs> that was just one of one of those days. Um, unveilings are, are not fun even with socks. I want people to know out there, if you're plan, planning on going to an unveiling, you say to yourself, you know, Zig went to an unveiling, he had no socks. It wasn't good. I'm going to wear socks. I'm going to expect a good time. No, it's dead people. (laughs) It's not not going to be a good time. I don't want to lead anybody on in any way. Um, (laughs) So I get carried away with myself every now and again. It's a good story, Ralph. (laughs) Yeah, that was a a true story. You couldn't make something like that up. I'll, I'll continue that someday and tell the story about my brother was sitting shiver in a Santa Claus outfit. (laughs) But that's for another day. Um, Let's talk a little Yankees. They didn't sign Frazier. Is there a possibility that they could come up and um, sign uh, Moussakis? Is there any room for that? You guys told me off the air that Frazier was signed out by the Mets. I'm a Mets fan. I'm delirious. But the numbers were two years, $17 million. That doesn't sound like very much at all. And if no. um, if there's any sort of uh, collusion going on to drive the salaries down, 
it seems to be working because we're a week away from spring training and um, there's still like 15 guys out there that are impact ball players. Yeah, so, I think there's something like 80. Do you, do you think Moustakis might fit in the Yankee budget? Um, they have about $22 million they can spend right now. I know they'd like to save some for the, you know, in case they acquire someone during the season. But, um, I mean, personally, I would like to see them have someone at third, uh, some kind of veteran presence. Because I, I only saw Andahar for two games, but what from what I read about him, he's very aggressive at the plate. He's not sure-handed in the infield. It just seems like you're taking a chance going with him at third. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think they have to pick up a veteran, just, you know, like uh, Robert was saying, because you need somebody – at second or third base, you know, just to solidify, you know, have a veteran presence. And uh, I, I don't like, you know, two rookies starting. And the Yankees, I think, are only looking for maybe one year at $10 million or $12 million. So it, it's definitely, uh, you know, they don't want to give out uh, long-term contracts anymore. Now, isn't it true that the Yankees are uh, backed up against the soft cap and everything they spend – over that cap, there's big penalties, and it, I don't understand how that is. That system um, isn't in itself restrictive to restricts uh, free agency from that standpoint. How could that stand up in, in a court of law? <laughs> you got me. I'm not it, fully. It's a good question, Ralph. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know how the Yankees are. They used to spend all the time, right? And yeah. just because just because um, few mistakes were made along the way, for instance, I don't think you can name three pitchers who have panned out on long term contracts in the history of free agency. And I mean, it's just not a good bet to invest heavy bucks in. Um, in guy in pitchers, there's just too much in, in uncertainty in that. Yeah, you know, one one pitch, your career is done. <laughs> That's the way it works. I, no, I, I still remember it. Carl Pavano. Yes. Oh, uh, what, yes. what a nightmare that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nightmare worth it, worth the money. What's the best signing the Yankees ever made? I think it was Reggie Jackson. Oh, wow. How about Catfish? Catfish Hunter. That was a good one, yes. That was a good one. That was one pitcher who did pan out. Um, very good. And my, I, I grew up watching him in the late 80s, mid to late 80s, early 90s. I, I loved Jimmy G, and then I loved Roger Clemens later on. Uh, and David Cohn. One of the things with Catfish, I mean, at the end of his contract, it was a five-year contract. He, he won 23 games his first year, 17 the second year, and by his fifth season, he was like two and nine. So, you know, the, the pitchers wear down. No question. No you, question. He was a Billy guy, right? You win, 23, you win 23 games. That pretty much justifies the contract. Team wins a pennant. It justifies yeah. an awful lot that you go that they go through. Uh, one winning season makes it makes a big difference because not only do you build a fan base following you that season, you build up expectations from then on, and um, you could really ma- and plus a lot of it today. Teams are compensated by radio TV contracts and by merchandise sold in the stores, in their, their own little stores, the fan stores. Twelve different caps, 17 different jerseys, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's become the business of baseball that um, we can't possibly follow the economics behind the scenes one player was signed because 
there's just not enough money here, enough money there. They got to spend some money on Latin American scouting and the minor leagues, and you mix that in with uh, with the free agent draft, um, the amateur draft. You got to give big bonuses to those guys, which means getting big big time money for scouts to determine who to sign. It is a very complex business, baseball. Yeah. And plus, you have to deal with the strongest union under under God. And <laughs> the only really surviving strong union since Reagan cut the air traffic controllers and just broke unions all over over the country as a result of that, baseball union flourishes. So... Uh, it has become a business. When we were kids, I uh, I know, from speaking for myself, I loved baseball and sports because you didn't have to think about business. No. It, um, or at least, and it was business then, but kids are protected from that. And the more you learn about the game, you learn that it's you got to follow the money. Yeah. Well, one of the things I remember is, like, when you bought a Yankee hat, there was only one Yankee hat. Or you you bought yeah. a Yankee jacket, there was only one jacket. Now they're green, they're purple, they're blue, they're orange, they're every, every, color, every conceivable color you can think of. Right. <laughs> right. And what gets me is that people buy them, not that they put them out. Yeah. You, you know, you can't blame them for trying. But yeah, they got to match the color of their logo on their shoes. Right. Jesus. And that yeah. cheapens it too. And you've got the, what still bugs me, even though what they've replaced them with, and what I'm talking about, wool caps. They have replaced them with a fabric that is so much like wool, you really can't tell the difference. You could feel that cap. It's soft, um, and apparently it lasts longer. It... Um, it's an artificial blend, and um, for one reason or another, they still get to price it the same as wool, if not more. But um, that and no flannel uniforms, that gets me the polyesters I'm not nuts about. But they're going to, to um, climate-controlled uniforms now. So... Uh, um, so the heat of the summer and what have you. That's just another change in baseball. I'm going to ask both of you guys, what are some of the changes since you were kids following the game that you like about baseball and some of the changes that you don't like about baseball? Start with you, Robert. Oof. Uh, I don't like that the, the all-star game, the winner gets home field advantage and in the World Series. I, I don't like that. I think that's going to be changing. I, I read that somewhere. Uh, oh, really? Time. Good. Yeah, the new, what was the new player agreement? That's going to be. And the guy who devised that was the same guy who cancels the World Series, and that was Pud Selig, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, And he's, the right. reason I mention that, he's in the Hall of Fame. And <laughs> what? That's the joke. <laughs> is that is that ever a joke? Um, yeah. Whereas Marvin Miller, who revolutionized baseball, is not in the Hall of Fame, and there is not a player. If he's not in the Hall of Fame, players should not show up. To they talk about not showing up if Bonds and Clemens are elected, they shouldn't show up unless Marvin Miller is elected. That's the way out. He's such an instrumental man and so important. And you have people like Bowie Kuhn in the Hall of Fame, Bud Selig in the Hall of Fame, Judge Landis in the Hall of Fame, an absolute racist. Yet yeah, Tom Yorkey, an incredible racist, is in the Hall of Fame. And P. Rose bet a little bit, you know. It, and you know who yeah, should be I, in two in a special? Kurt Flood. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 
the Hall of Fame? I, I don't know. He did sacrifice plenty, but he was never rewarded um, for his plight, and it did lead to to free agency, absolutely, from that standpoint. Um, Roger Maris should be in the Hall of Fame. Minnie Minoso should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, there's Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges. No, no question about about him, him being there. Wow. We were going to talk about Yankee farm system prospects coming up that we, um, as as casual observers of the Yankees, may not be aware of. Who stands out coming up in the system that you could say, well, two or three years from now, this guy's going to be knocking at the door? Start with you, Robert. Um, there's this outfielder, uh, Esteban Florio, I think his name is. He played in single A and uh, high A last year, but they love this kid. Um, he's got power. He's only he's just only 19 years old. He can he can run. He can hit. He can hit for power. Um, he can play all three outfield positions. I mean, he's the one guy they would not consider moving, trading last year or this off season. Whoa! Mm-hmm. He's a guy to keep up. What level did he play at last year? Last year he played at low A and then high A to finish off the year. He was, okay, he was only 19. One of those that played in the Arizona Fall League. Um, I'm pretty sure he did. I think he did. Okay. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay, yeah. I know Sheffield. Justice Sheffield was there. I know a few of them were there. Is Justin Sheffield a, a relation to Gary Sheffield? I I don't know. I don't think so. But I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. No, okay, yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. DeGraw, Jack DeGraw, anybody well, stand out you in the system? Like like Robert said, I seen F- Floriel at the, in Tampa last year, and he can really cover the outfield. I mean, uh, defensively, he's excellent. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing him in spring training this year. And another guy to be excited about is the second baseman, Nick Solak. Oh, yeah, he I heard about Louisville. him. Yeah, he played at Louisville, and then he played in, the, you know, the, the New York Penn League with the Yankees. And I, I, I know I'm a friend with a, the guy on the Cardinals, the pitching coach, and he said, watch this Solak kid. And I seen him in Tampa last year, and this kid could really hit. I mean, he just hits rockets all over the field. And he got called to uh, Trenton last year, so I, I think he's on a he's a quick mover because he's 23 and he played at high level uh, college. And there's a couple other guys, Dylan Tate, he's a pitcher, and uh, this guy T- Taylor Widener. There's another kid to, to look for. The Yankees are loaded. I mean, their farm system is uh, sometimes in some positions are three or four players deep. Well, as loaded as as they are on a big league level. And you got to say, Sanchez and Judge, just themselves, uh, let alone the new signing, those guys are going to generate interest for a long time. They're young. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, if I could say which one is a guarantee Sanchez is get, is more of a sure bet to me to have a long-term major career, major league career than Judge. And the reason I say that is that he Judge streaks both ways. Yeah. Sanchez is much more consistent. From day to day, you know what you're going to get from him. And I always wonder when Judge is streaking badly, he did recover from it toward the end of August and early September, but that was kind of a horrendous slump. There were three or four yeah. weeks there where he could not hit water with a paddle. <laughs> so and he barely got it over two hundred. <laughs> yeah, but nope. again, he proved it. He came out strong. You hit fifty home yeah. runs in the 
major leagues, you got something going for you. His power is but awesome. The, the Yankees uh, last year, 200 likes. Who's that? Bird. Oh, Great yeah, bird. I do too. If he could he, stay healthy when a full I season. In Tampa, I thought he was the best hitter. You know, that includes Sanchez and Judge. I mean, I, I think this kid could really be something special. Yeah, well, he was, wasn't he considered the Yankees' best hitting prospect before he even came up out of all of them? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he started yeah. out as a catcher, and then they moved him to first base. Yeah. You know who but, I but that like? that really hit. Hayes, who in the Sonny Gray deal, I think we may have talked about this last, last week. Dustin uh, Fowler. Uh, Fowler, whoa. If he comes yeah. back from injury, they've already got him at the top of the depth chart in center field. Um, not that Smolinski beating him out um, is great guns, but uh, good young player What is Smolinski, as a matter of fact. And they're really um, saying good things about him out here. And uh, he's a, they're talking about him as a catalyst as a guy who can get on and make things happen a little bit at the top of the order. And that would be so nice to see. Uh, you got to give to get. you got to be happy with getting so yeah. great. I'm sure both of you are. Well, oh, yeah. you think, Ralph, if you're an A's fan, the, the guy to look for is uh, James Caprillion. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, uh, you know, Gil Patterson is the pitching coach now for the A's in the, in the minor leagues. He runs the whole system. And he worked with Caprillion down here. And I've seen Caprillion pitch in Tampa. And, and this kid, if he comes back from the Tommy John surgery, you could have a number one, number two starter. Yeah, they, they're good. expecting him to be full recovery and ready to go in the major leagues, like they said, year 2020. But I think he might be ready even next year. Okay, did he come along with uh, in the Sunny Gray deal with Fowler? Yeah, I believe he did. Okay, well that may work out. You got to trust Billy Bean, I guess, because he always brings them back in to contention, working with very little funds. I compare it with what you're looking at in Tampa. I compare the ace situation very much the same. Both teams looking for a a new ballpark. Both teams juggling finances all the time. And it becomes very frustrating. I I can't say I'm a fan fan of the A's, but I'm certainly an apologist living uh, literally within walking distance, a long walk albeit, um, if I had to from the Oakland Coliseum. So you've got to pick up some fan following there, and um, but I've seen them up and down. I have a, uh, I have memories of them built again, getting rid of guys, getting r- rid of guys, uh, the the pitcher to to the Braves to Atlanta, who um, who went on, his name I blank on, um, this eight to ten years ago, he was up with Mulder and the, and those guys. But that being said, um, it's a Yankee show. You'll be happy with Sonny Gray. I don't know if you realize he's got playoff experience. Three, yeah. Three, three years ago, and he did very well in the playoffs. So um, a good guy to have on your team. How's Tanaka? Do you think he's going to be coming back for a good year next? Yeah. I think he'll rebound. I mean, he, he was, you know, his old self basically in the second half and was phenomenal in the, in the playoffs. I, I think he'll be better than what he was last year. I mean, he, he can't go worse than 13 and 12. CC is signed yeah, he, for another year? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're cool there. Should be a very interesting year, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? What do you, well, he came back. up big in the playoffs. What do you think they're lacking going into spring training? The one thing you would hope they they get before now and then. Uh, veteran infielder. Yeah, yeah, I agree there. Yeah. 
So you would have been, you guys would have been just as happy if Frazier signed with the Yankees as I am that he signed with the Mets. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, had they, had they, and if they, I, I think now they're going to probably go for a guy named Nunez, the Yankees will. That's what I'm thinking. He's very versatile. So my feeling would be that if you had him on the bench, whichever infielder faltered, he could fill in for. And uh, well, he go ahead. He played with the Yankees before, and his main problem is he makes the hard plays, but he he miss, he misses the routine ground balls. But but I, but I, I I think he would be a nice pickup because he's a good hitter and he can play you know second, third, and he can even play a little bit of shortstop if DD gets hurt. Right. So, and, and, and I'm hoping. Uh, any other position that you feel they could use a little boosting? Uh, Their the starting rotation right now is they have five starters, um, so if anyone gets hurt, they'll be they'll be going to their minors right now. I I think they wouldn't mind getting someone, but it'd have to, it'd have to be cheap. Okay. Do you see Harvey in the future? In their future? Mm, no, not really. Yeah, the arm scares me. Yeah, it scares me as a Met fan too. Yeah. But, uh, it's, not, it's not something. It's the arm. It's that he had two separate surgeries. It was not just the arm. He had a neck problem as well. And I think all things considered, he came back, uh, showed a little decency at times last year. And it would be nice for the Mets. You know, this is spring where we all think good things and we want to be positive. Um, I think perhaps Harvey could surprise. That would be nice. Um, there's all kinds of question marks. Mats is a question mark with the Mets. Um, uh, uh, Wheeler, Zach Wheeler is a question mark. So we'll see. They have a new manager with um, – some real good success in building pitching staffs. He was the the Cleveland pitching coach for a long time, or not a long time, but he built a, built a team. I think they had the lowest ERA in in the American League last year, and he has some philosophy uh, differences where um, he wants to um, have a pre-game workout for pitchers stretching and what have you before you come out on the field all kinds of weight stuff and um, so it's the new it'd be nice to see the, things. it'd be nice to see the Mets bounce back with their pitching this year it really would it would because uh, you know last year I was talking to Marty on the other show on the, on the Mets show and last year at this time they had a possibility of having seven starting pitching, starting pitchers, and it was, uh, you know, it was just a, a glutton of luxury, and um, it went to hell on a handbasket really soon. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's been two years now of uh, injuries uh, beyond comparison. I think they're learning that they're going to have to hydrate Cespedes a little bit, and that might keep him healthy, keep him from blowing a hamstring out every other Thursday. <laughs> so we'll see. Did they change the training staff? Joe, pardon me. Uh, sorry, did they did they change the training staff because they got all these they pitchers lifting weight? They did indeed. They made a total. Uh, Good. Um, change there from the top to the bottom, and um, that's got to help considerably. A lot of it could be just luck, but, you know, two years in a row, they're doing something wrong, and at least they had the foresight to make a change. Um, I'm an admirer of Sandy, uh, as I am of Cashman. You know, Cashman's been there now 20 years. 
That's yeah. a long. That's a long run. And, yeah. um, so we'll see. Once again, I'm going to ask you. You think Girardi will be mixed, Jack? Um, it just okay. Okay. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, uh, it, it's just, it, like I said last week, I just think it's time for a change. And, you know, they have so much talent that it's not so much Boone coming in, just don't screw things up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, th- th- that's the thing. There, there's so much talent there that, you know, they, they can't help, you know, they'll, they'll win 95-plus games. Yeah. So I, I don't think they're going to miss Girardi, even though I thought uh, Girardi did a, an excellent job. Okay. Yeah. Emil, I, I don't think they'll miss him either. Unless they get off to a, a hard start, then then maybe you might hear a little rumbling, but I don't think he's going to be missed. Like Jack, but there, there's so much talent there with the Yankees. Okay. And I was, I was going to say, MLB.com proposed a question today. If the Yankees, they had 241 home runs last year, if they could break the major league mark of 264 set by the 97 Mariners with the addition of Stanton. Well, you would, um, you know, I, I don't know how many strikeouts go along with that, though. <laughs> <laughs> the, there might be a ball put in play this year. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't want to stretch it. That I don't want to get any, anybody's hopes up too high. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a good show. I enjoy your company as usual. And uh, another week, pitches and catches, spring training. Yeah. Uh, Got to look forward to it. Well, I'll be down there. <laughs> um, tell me about the situation in Tampa. You have an A team. And uh, a major league team, am I correct? In the same city, am I correct? Uh, yes, and they play at the same ballpark. It, it was the Tampa Yankees. Now they're the Tampa Tarpons, and they play 140 games, and they play 70 home games, and they have no fans. <laughs> and uh, they, they're lucky to get 100 fans a game. And in the 13 years I've been going to Tampa Yankee games, the Yankees have sent 105 guys to the big team. So a lot of talent wow. has come through here. Yeah, that's always fun. I don't know if you know, Jack, I was the top baseball card representative on the West Coast, and I cover uh, I covered the class uh, high A league, uh, California league, and the Northwest League, which is kind of a break-in league. It's a short season A. And I had I did that for 13, 14 years and developed an incredible love for minor league baseball. So It's fantastic. Yeah, we're going to keep – I have a, a love and a respect. I have a, a, an undying respect for minor league coaches – who make a fraction of what major league coaches make and are so much more responsible for not only the development of a player, but the development of the person coming into ball. Because by the time they reach the majors, they're not really coachable um, for the most part. And these low minor league coaches that break players in and they develop work habits for the players um, and attitude and everything else. And they ride the buses and they make a fraction of the amount of money. That's um, not right. How about that? The simplest way. I, I agree with you. And all these kids I've met down with the T- Tampa Yankees, minor leaguers, 100% class. They're all great kids. Right, and they basically, the ones that are um, become spoiled, you become a millionaire at, at 20. I, I wonder how we would have handled having millions of dollars at, at that young age. So, um, 
Anyway, I enjoyed meeting these players when they were uh, young and upcoming and um, uh, great memories, as uh, I'm sure you do. Um, yeah, great story, great five memories. players, you said, came out of Tampa, already made yeah. it to the big. Wow. Yeah. And I'm sure others, other players with other clubs, too, because that's how it goes. Sometimes you're stacked up behind – you might be the fifth outfielder on the depth shot, depth chart in the minors, and you could be the first first guy on some other team. So um, it balances out, and um, baseball is great. Let's we all agree on that. No doubt, absolutely. All right, we'll be back next week. By that time, pitchers and catchers will have reported. Holy Toledo. Adios, everybody. We'll be back. Be well. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good one. Take care, guys.